McCaffrey leading the NFL in rushing yards with 459, rushing touchdowns with six, while also leading the league in scrimmage yards at 600 and scrimmage touchdowns with seven. He's 14-1 to one to win the MVP. Jinx, he's the best player on the best team. So doesn't that make him the MVP? Yeah. It's at 14-1, to one, yes. Right now, I would say, and now I think the book on Christian McCaffrey for years, which we all know is, hey, he can't stay healthy. Hey, he can't stay healthy. Oh, so much talent, but he's always banged up, which was true. But we haven't seen it now. He looks unbelievable. That is the only sabotage factor. So, yes, this is a quarterback award. That's why, what do you see? Who do you see ahead of Christian McCaffrey? Josh Allen, Tua, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, all quarterbacks. So, two risks. A, maybe Christian gets injured. B, it's a quarterback-driven award. But at the same time, if he continues to be this dynamic and the Niners keep winning, why not? I love it. Yeah. Well, I would agree with you, too, but that doesn't mean he's going to win it because this is a quarterback award. We haven't had a non-quarterback win this since 2014, maybe, when Adrian Peterson won it. Uh, Yeah, it was 2012, so it's been even longer. Look at Cooper Cup. The guy won the triple crown of receiving, was unguardable. Did he win the MVP? No, he didn't because this is a quarterback award. So I think in a year, if there were no quarterbacks who were putting up eye-popping stats, maybe you could make a case for Christian McCaffrey. But I just feel like the crop of quarterbacks is still too good for somebody to pry this award away from quarterbacks. I still think it's going to be a quarterback. And that is the only reason I would say uh, Christian McCaffrey's not winning MVP. The biggest question you ask is, is it truly a two-person race for Heisman? Because right now it kind of feels like it is. But there are some names on this list that could possibly put some big numbers up in the second half of the season. Because you've got to remember, we've still got plenty of season left to give for some of these guys to uh, put some bigger stats on the board. Uh, I don't know. It it feels like it's going to be Michael Penix Jr. or Caleb Williams, even though people keep saying, we haven't had a repeat Heisman winner in quite some time, right? Uh, do you think that is a factor here? And is that a reason why you would not take Cal- Caleb Williams? Do you think this has something to do with the voters? Or do you think it's just because quarterbacks just haven't had those back-to-back seasons that warrant a Heisman? No, I think that Archie Griffin is the only guy to ever do it. Ohio State running back back in the late 70s, then get drafted by the Bengals and dealt with all sorts of injuries in the NFL. Met him a couple years ago. Well, a few years ago now. He's a super, super nice guy. I will say this. It's just difficult. When you're talking about the entire college football landscape and you're trying to repeat as the best player in the country, there's just so much parity that goes into it. And sometimes, unlike in the NFL, I feel like, or maybe in Major League Baseball, you do get punished as a Heisman Trophy winner if your team loses. You know, that's very much synonymous with, A, you have to bring it each and every week. B, your team has to win. So I don't necessarily think he would be punished just because he's won it before. But ultimately, if USC gets into the teeth of their Pac-12 schedule, which is really good, and they lose a couple games, we will see him fall back. Yeah, I think so as well. I think Sam Hartman would be in the discussion if Notre Dame didn't already lose because he has 14 touchdowns and not a single interception on the year. But if we're squarely looking at stats... I think Bo Nix has to enter the conversation at some point. 15 touchdowns, only one interception, and a lot of this hinges on Oregon being good as well. But if you're going to bring up Michael Penix Jr., you probably got to throw in Bo Nix as well. You got a minute here. Does, is Mac Jones, is he not mm. Taylor Tuck? Is he just a dirty player now? Oh, God. Yeah, Taylor Swift is tougher. I think Belichick would think that too. Taylor Swift is tougher than Mac Jones. I, Mac Jones is just not good. I am out on Mac Jones. I don't think the Patriots recover from this really rough start to the season, and I don't see them really doing anything this season. And they're boring. They're boring, and there's no juice to them. And I think that they're – I'm out on them. I'm out on this Patriots team. What I saw last week, disgusting and embarrassing. As a Patriots fan, embarrassing, disgusting. I think the problem really, though, is the lighthouse is cursed. I think that's the issue. They built this brand new lighthouse at Gillette Stadium. Tom Brady was the the keeper of the lighthouse, the very first one. That's a new tradition. Um, And since then, really, really rough start for the Patriots. So um, I would say tear down the new lighthouse that you spent like $100 million on. And uh, it it was not worth it. Lighthouse is is gone. I think that that is cursed. And that is the problem for the Patriots right now. Also, Mac Jones stinks. Those are the two biggest problems. I was going to say, right now. I don't think the Lighthouse can take full blame of what we've seen from Mac <laughs> Jones doing out there. On He's just god-awful. Let's make the jump 
to Europe, where the Jags are getting five and a half against the Vils. What's the call here? Yeah, because this is over in Europe and the Jags have been in Europe for the past week after playing on Saturday, I'm going to back the Jags plus the points. Uh, getting five and a half against this Bills team, this simply just kind of a, a spot play for me. Jacksonville not having to travel, their body clocks are adjusted to the time change over there. Bills having to make the long trek, some jet lag. Also, Jacksonville plays in London every year. They're familiar with just kind of how that week goes, their process uh, in getting prepared for that game. And I think fans over in Europe are starting to find some familiarity with the Jags and maybe having the Jags be their team there. So fan base wise, I know Bills fans travel really well, but it might be a little bit more of a home feeling for Jacksonville. Plus, Buffalo's coming off of that big win over Miami. We kind of saw what happened to Miami after a big win. They beat the Broncos by 50. The next week, they go to Buffalo. Not necessarily laid an egg, but just weren't as crisp as they typically are. I'm wondering if maybe that happens for the Bills this weekend after a great win over the Dolphins. Now they go face a Jacksonville team that I don't think we've seen reach its full potential. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence has not looked great. I still have a lot of belief in him and his abilities as a quarterback. And I think we see that show this weekend. So I'm going to take the Jags with the points over in London this weekend. Yeah, at some point we have to see the Jags look better, right? Like that offense was right. primed to have a great season. So at some point we'll see it, I would assume. And plus, you're right. It's a team that's played in London all the time. They should be used to it by now. Let's go back to the college ranks. And it looks like you're fading USC, which after seeing that defensive output against Colorado last week, I don't think I can blame you. So what's the call in USC and Arizona? Yeah, certainly fading USC because of its defense. Gave up 27 second-half points to Colorado. Yes, they were able to escape with a win, but the defense is so costly for USC. So I don't think this team, despite uh, the Trojans' offense being able to put up a boatload of points, they can't lay over three touchdowns and expect to cover these games. Plus, I know I just talked about Notre Dame being in a sandwich spot, and I'm still backing uh, the Irish this is also a sandwich spot for USC, and I'm not going to back them in this spot, clearly. They play Notre Dame next weekend, coming off that win over Colorado. I think this is just kind of one where USC just tries to get by with the win, doesn't worry about covering this spread. Um, Arizona's also a 17-point underdog against Washington last week. They only lost by a touchdown. Nine-point dog against Mississippi State earlier this season, uh, also covered that spread. And last year against these two teams, Wildcats put up 37 points. Quarterback Jaden Delora threw for 380 yards, three touchdowns. I think he can have a similar type of game against the Trojans defense on Saturday. And the last three games between these two teams have all been decided by one score. So I think we get another close contest, 21 and a half points. That's just too many. So I will take the points with the Wildcats.